Metals One has an attractive portfolio of exploration properties in Scandinavia. There's quite a lot uh, of variety on offer here. So here to tell us a bit more about it in detail is uh, CEO Jonathan Owen. Jonathan, tell us more. Thank you, Alistair. So let me start at the beginning uh, in terms of Metals One and, and what we're about. So as Europe accelerates its transition towards a greener and more technologically sophisticated future, its appetite for technology metals such as copper and nickel, cobalt, continues to outpace supply. European demand for copper, for example, a critical component in, in all technologies, is forecast to double to 50 million tonnes by 2035. And meanwhile, Europe looks to cut its reliance on politically and environmentally challenging suppliers such as China, Russia and Indonesia, and instead focus on sourcing locally within Europe for Europe. And uh, for the manufacturers, the car manufacturers such as BMW, Stellantis, VW Group, etc., uh, sourcing reliable sources of these metals locally is a top priority. So at Metals One, we have the Black Shift Project. This is located in Northern Europe in Finland. It's a fantastic asset that we expect will supply a significant volume of these important materials, these important metals, at one of the lowest costs of production and one of the lowest environmental impacts as well. So there's been some recent developments uh, at Black Schist. Uh, what, what's been happening uh, over the last week or so? Yeah, just to wind the clock back a, a year or so. So we listed uh, just over a year ago and, uh, and hit the ground running with the Black Schist projects. We doubled the resource base from uh, around about 28 million tonnes to just under 60 million tonnes of these this important uh, source of technology metals. And... Um, you know, we look to continue to expand that resource base to around about 200 million tonnes over the, the short to medium term. Uh, meanwhile, we took the decision to undertake a preliminary economic assessment of this, uh, of this asset so to understand, you know, what are the project economics? And this will open the door, we expect, to uh, sources of European funding, grants, etc., and also underpin any, any conversations we might have with, with JV partners, for example. Um, in terms of the last week, then, so in terms of the this continued expansion of that resource base, 60 million tonnes to 200 million tonnes, we've been working through systematically historical drill cores that the Geological Survey of Finland had taken in, in multiple areas of our Black Shish project area. And uh, these were drilled decades ago. And of course, technology has, has moved on since then, assaying accuracy, and efficiency has increased significantly. And so we took the opportunity to reassay a lot of these old uh, drill cores. And, you know, to our delight, we have discovered significantly higher grades of, again, these, these critical metals, the technology metals, copper, cobalt, nickel, et cetera, you know, across, across, the, uh, across the samples. So what will, what will that mean for the project then? What it means for the project, it, 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 it's, uh, it, Increases confidence, reduces risk. Uh, again, as we as we continue to expand our footprint, expand our resource base. So it's all about increasing confidence levels, and um, uh, allowing us to reduce exploration risk, if you like, to to go and drill uh, additional uh, 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 drilling at these various locations with the knowledge that you know we we're onto something really good. And so you mentioned the PEA uh, a, a second or so, a minute or so ago. Um, tell us a bit more about what's involved with that. So the PEA, the Preliminary Economic Assessment, uh, sometimes called the scoping study, uh, it effectively looks at your, your asset, your ore body, and uh, determines what it would cost to actually extract that and then sell the end product to the market. So it's basically building a, a, a business model, a business case for your, for your mine. Uh, so it will output your, your your capital requirements to build the mine, what your expected internal rate of returns, your MPV would be, et cetera. Um, and that's then the you know the business case that you can take to um, take to your board then to underpin um, or, or uh, uh, request further you know, further funds for further development. Alternatively, um, and this is always an option for a company of our size, it's the uh, it's the mechanism by which you can then, you know, value a project and take it to the market to look for for JV partners or acquiring um, you know, mid-tier mid mining companies, for example. And remind us again of the timing of the PEA. So the PEA, we're looking to have completed uh, in December, if not sooner. So uh, we commissioned Wardle Armstrong, a global mining services 
uh, provider to do to do this work uh, independently. And uh, so they're going through the process right now quite diligently. And uh, it's quite an involved process, of course, looking at the the, the cost base, uh, potential suppliers, local contractors, et cetera, uh, and then building up the economic model. So December, I'd like to, to push it sooner, but uh, expectation is December. So one assumes the PEA is built around the existing resource, but um, referring to the reassays, which we talked about um, earlier, is there a um, scope for an increase in the size of the resource um, as well, looking ahead? No, absolutely. So the PEA is uh, frozen, if you like, in, in terms of uh, which which volumes uh, it's looking at. So it's looking at that uh, 60 million, circa 60 million ton uh, resource base. Yes, we'll bring on additional 20, 30 million tons here and there as the work program develops. And then we will look to update the PEA as those resources come in. And realistically, though, we're, you know, we, we're pushing to do the pre-feasibility uh, study, which is the next phase, you know, a huge, significant milestone in the development of a mining operation uh, next year. So what we'll likely do on the back of a positive PEA is to, to roll up any additional resources into the into the next stage, into that pre-feasibility uh, uh, study. So as you know, I spoke to Lord Ashbourne recently about Metals One, and one thing he mentioned was the possibility of government grants when it comes to funding. Have you got any mm. um, insight you can give us as to whether, um, you know, whether that's a meaningful uh, possibility? Absolutely. No, it, it's, 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 it's hugely exciting. So the EU passed recently passed legislation uh, supporting the, the domestic sourcing of these critical metals or strategic metals, they call them um, in law. So that's your nickel, your cobalt, your copper, your lithium, et cetera. And that legislation offers all sorts of avenues of, of uh, accelerated development. So in terms of permit uh, fast tracking, but it also opens up the opportunities for EU uh, funding, EU grants, so non-dilutive funding to support projects like ours. The, in fact, the PEA, is is you know a critical document that will underpin our application to the EU for what they call strategic project status. So that application will go in in uh, in Q1 next year, and uh, as Lord Ashbourne uh, uh, alluded to, that uh, strategic project status then will open up uh, EU grants and funding to continue to develop the project. So that's exciting. Um, so before we wrap it up, um, Jonathan. Um, Tell us a little bit about your joint venture with King's Rose, because we haven't really covered that off um, in, in any detail so far in this conversation. Yeah, so the Blackshish project that we've been talking about uh, in Finland is, is very much uh, my team's focus on, on developing, uh, rapidly developing. The uh, We also have then the Rana project in Norway, which is a uh, joint venture, as I say, with King's Rose Mining, listed on the ASX. This is an earlier stage exploration uh, project. But it's it's hugely significant on a global scale in in terms of potential volumes and quality, and um, you know uh, it's a very exciting project. So, Kings Rose are farming into the project, and um, so they're they're doing the work on the ground, the drilling, the assaying, um, the the geological mapping, and they're paying for it. So they've invested over over five million dollars uh, to date. They've committed another three or four million dollars over the next uh, over the next uh, work period. And uh, that, you know, will hopefully un unlock, uh, like as I say, a potential world class asset in the in the coming uh, in the coming months and years. So much to look forward to um, as we come into the autumn and winter in the northern hemisphere. Um, we'll be watching with great interest. Um, thanks for joining us uh, today, Jonathan. Thank you, Alistair.